built like that, Tommy. That ain't even me, yo. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J. This is Monday Mistakes, Episode 4, Power Book 4, 4, Season 2. Jeez Louise, there's a lot of mistakes being made, and I know everyone's thinking, maybe D-Mag made the biggest mistake, or maybe Bennigan made the biggest mistake. But then again, maybe Claudia made a mistake, but then maybe Vic made a mistake, or did Walter make a mistake? Did the fans make a mistake? No, Stacey Marks made a mistake, so... Stacey Marks made a mistake. She exposed herself, but that's a whole other story. Man, I'm J, man. You know how it is. It's a Monday. I got a lot of business taken care of. This is my official last week after Sunday. You won't see me on camera till maybe October 15th, 16th, maybe. So I'm about to try to knock some shit out for y'all. You know what I'm saying? We got Monday mistakes. We got a Tubi movie following after. Maybe an hour in between. That's why I started this at six. But we got a Tubi movie tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we got the, uh, the the Queen of Cocaine on both channels. The more you know, Modi J. Hit that subscribe button over there. I think we need like five people now. We get 200 subscribers over there. We got a lot of shit. And once I get touched down to cause hell... Man, we're going to take this whole channel to another level because when Ray's and Kanan come back out, let me tell you something. Y'all can pause this. You can do whatever you want to do right now. But I'm busting niggas over their god darn head when Ray's and Kanan come out because we got Monday mistakes and don't nobody do it like me because don't nobody break a show down how a show supposed to be broken down like Mo break it down. You know what I mean? Because Mo break a show down how a show is supposed to be broken down. Now, you know, I ain't got no drinky drink tonight. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no smoky smoke tonight. We about to do this all sober. This whole week, I'm about to be sober. <laughs> so we about to go ahead and jump into it. It's Monday Mistakes. How are we feeling today? I got my international driver's license. Well, my pass, not my passport, but my permit. I got that today. I sold the whip today. Man, I did a lot of shit. Saved my parents $68 on their Spectrum cable bill. You know what I'm saying? Turned in the old box. I had to go up there, call customer service, and say, hey, the man behind the counter don't know what he's talking about. Boom. They talking to each other. I'm like, so what we going to do? They said, we got a solution. Take it on down to a UPS. They going to scan it. They going to send it back in. I said, all right, what is your name? I said, can I get your last name? She said, I can't give out my last name. I said, well, what's your employee ID number? She gave me that number. I wrote that down, gave that to my mom and said, if that $68 ain't off, then go ahead and notify me because I get on the ass next month and we're going to get $150 off of it. And if that don't work, we'll call up ABC Channel 12 News and we'll tell them how Spectrum is screwing mother effers over. It's Monday mistakes. We don't make mistakes on Monday. We make mistakes on Thursday and Friday. It's Monday. We get right. We get right on Monday. We get right on Mondays. But this is Monday Mistakes. I'm Modi J, and this is episode four. Who are we starting with this week? Who are we starting with this week? It's Monday Mistakes. Monet made mistakes? No, Monday Mistakes. And you know, I put the feds up here to let y'all know that the feds are watching. You know what I'm saying? The feds are watching. The feds are watching. Well, the, the the whole problem, Trench, was my parents, they old school. So before Spectrum, there was Time Warner Cable. Now, my parents been having Time Warner Cable since way back when. So they were on a plan from 2001. And the plan said that they had a, a three-play plan or whatever it is where it said that they needed a box. Now, my whole gripe was, how are my parents still on a, a OG grandfather in Time Warner contract from 2001, but you're telling me that they can't turn this box in because it's saying that they need one? Well, I'm not the smartest, but I told the lady, I say, we wasn't streaming shit in 2001. My parents ain't paying for no fucking box. Take it off the fucking account. Now, if I got to request a goddamn manager, we shall do that because my parents been getting robbed. 
So she didn't get the manager on. She found out how to turn the box in and told me to go to UPS. That's where the issue lies. How are you going to be on a contract from 2001 because y'all merged, but streaming wasn't out? So you telling me that they need a box to stream when they got smart TVs? Then they tried to upsell it, talking about, well, if you get Apple TV, you don't need no fucking Apple TV. They try to get over on the elders. You know, my daddy just turned 73. They trying to get over on my dad. My dad don't know nothing. He looking at the bill like, hell, I don't know, Julius. I don't know why they make me pay this. Like, give me the, give me the, give me the goddamn keys. I'm going up there. I'm turning that shit in. Yeah, so I took care of that today. You know what I'm saying? They were holding me back, too. I was trying to get over the counter. They're like, hey, chill, chill, chill. Nah, it didn't go that far, but I did get that handle. Shout out to my dog, Brillo. <sighs> Cut them. Well, I mean, this is my parents. This is all they really got out here. I mean, it's because we used to have Time Warner Cable. They merged, and now it, I guess it's Spectrum. Over at my, at my brother, we got Google Fiber. So when it's working, it's working. But when Google Fiber don't work, it don't work. Y'all seen what was happening last week, but I mean, that's the mistakes that they made out in the business world, but you know, it don't matter. You know what I mean? It don't matter. I had Xfinity. Xfinity tried to get me when I was out in California talking about we upgraded the package and I had to pay an energy bill. I said, why am I paying the energy bill? I ain't running up the energy. I don't want cable. I don't want a landline. I just want internet. Anything I need to watch, I can find it on the internet. My name is Modi J. This is episode four, Monday Mistakes, and we already know what it is. Let's go ahead and get this thing started, man. I'm over here talking some big shit, but I'm in a big mood. <laughs> All right, who we got? Who we got for real this time? Who we got for real this time? Hey, I ain't going to lie to you, shy girl. I do miss the West Coast. I ain't going to lie. I see why they said the West Coast was the best coast. California, well. Maybe it's because I'm from Kansas City, but California, like I'm on the highway today. I had to go across the border and go over into Kansas to sell the car. You know what I'm saying? So the guy that bought my car, he gave me 200 extra dollars because I drove to the inspection so he can get the car inspected for his grandchildren. And then I went with him to the DMV. So he gave me 100 for each one of them, uh, them stops. So I told the man, I said, you got anywhere else we need to go today? <laughs> if you giving out $100 a stop, where, where are we going next? You want me to drive the car to the house? That'll be another 100 I almost made an extra three hundred dollars today, but man, they told me no. They told me no, man. <laughs> but the car is gone, and I'm in the suburban. You know, you know, I ain't gonna be out here walking. I'm in the bourbon right now. You know, I'm in the bourbon. Hell no, I ain't no Uber driver. Hell, I don't like driving with people in my vehicle. You know, my old car, my Acura, the one I told y'all got shot up. Well, it was only three bullets. I wouldn't. Do you consider three bullets in a car shot up or just shot? What would you What would you guys say? How many bullets do we consider shot up? Now, I can say I was shot at because it was only three bullets that hit my car. Now, is shot up like five or more or we got to say like 10? I'm just I'm trying to get understanding because Tommy car was hit probably about eight, nine times. So where's the cutoff of just being shot at and shot up? We're going to go five. I'm saying five bullets is shot up. Anything five and above is shot up. Anything up under five is you were shot at. All right, we all right, bet that'll be the that'll be the level. We'll, we'll we'll keep the level at five. To be shot up, it's got to be five. To be shot at three, four, two and a half maybe. And what I mean two and a half is like the bullet don't go all the way through the vehicle. It just hit like the side of the vehicle, so it ain't a full circle. It's like a half circle, like a crescent moon. All right, bet. Five is the number, man. Five is the number. Bet. Hey, Brillo, you hear that? We can't say shot up unless it's five bullets or more. All right, bet. So Tommy got shot at. Tommy didn't get shot up because he only got hit with one. Okay, it makes sense. Man, yeah, they shot that nigga Tommy. Man, they shot up Proctor. You see what I'm saying? They shot at Tommy. They shot at Ghost. They shot up Proctor. Oh. Oh. Nah, that three times, man. Nah, we got we got it. We got to get the terminology right, man. We got to get the term. Let's just ask the Fed. What do you think, Miss DEA? What you think? Let's see what she thinks. She's saying mm, roughly two and a half bullets is shot up. 
Nah, I can't know. We gotta have we gotta have some standards. That's one thing about me. If you guys haven't learned, I have standards, okay? So I need everything to be clear and concise so I know because I don't want to say someone is shot up and they only got hit one time. So Tommy being shot last week or two weeks ago, that's just being shot at. Shot up has to be multiple. You know what I mean? Damn, they shot that car up. It's like, damn, how many bullets hit it, man? Said at least 100 shots. You see what I'm saying? But all right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, Monday Mistakes is when we look back at the episode and we actually break down where everyone went wrong and how they could potentially fix it. So, of course, we have our stories on Fridays where we tell the story behind the story, but that's everyone's perspective. We don't really get into the nitty gritty of where they went wrong. We got to kind of put on our thinking cap and think, what would the police do? How could they trace this back to somebody? And that's why we have them on the screen now. Now, we haven't actually had a chance to put together the administrative group, but we will once I get situated. So right now, if we're looking at the mistakes being made, I'm going to go ahead and start with Vic. And the reason I'm going to start with Vic is because old bodies are catching up to the new story. You see what I'm saying? Your past reflects your future. You see what I'm saying? Everything you went through, a lot of people say that's a learning experience. Some people say you can learn from your past mistakes, i.e. Monday mistakes, and make a better Tuesday. But if the body from yesterday is found today and the witness from yesterday talks today that mistake from yesterday is now today's mistake and vic flynn when we thought that he was about to be the next up he's potentially about to lose it all because he was fucking with who tommy fucking egan now this mistake dates back at least a year everyone else knew mistakes but we have a body right here of the DJ telling us that last year Vic made a mistake by fucking with Tommy when Walter already told Vic, stop fucking with Tommy. But what did he do? What did he do? He fucked with Tommy. Come on, man. Look at this. It's saying it was a bullet wound to the, the, to the cranium, a bullet wound to the cheek. It says bullet wound through... Zogomatic bone. Let's see what this zogomatic bone. Zigomatic. I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> now I did used to play uh operation. Is it water on the knee? Operation. Now I did used to play that back in the day. I could whoop some ass in some motherfucking uh <laughs> operation. Let's see what this bone is and what does it actually control. Z Y. G Zigomatic, Zigomatic, Zigomatic bone. We're going to learn something today. Zygomatic bone. Oh, Zygomatic. I was calling it Zig, like Ziggy Marley. <laughs> well, with that being said, you already know where we're about to go with this. With that being said, you already know where we're about to go with this. Zigomatic, zig, zig, zigomatic, zig, 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 zigomatic, zig, zig, zygomatic bone. Zygo. Every day when you're walking down the street and niggas get to shooting, you better duck before they hit you and your what? Zygomatic bone. What a wonderful kind of day. Yeah, we go. Yeah. What you do? What you do? What you do? Hey, hey, what you do? What you do? Yeah, yeah, the rhythm of the street. What we gonna do though? What we gonna do? It's a simple message, and it comes from the heart. And I say, zygomatic bone, zygomatic bone, zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. You got to listen to your heart. Listen to the beat. Listen to the rhythm. Listen. The zygomatic bone. All right. It's the bone that forms the prominent part of the cheek 
in the outer side of the eye socket. All right, zygomatic. Zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. So I'm assuming they're talking about this bone right here, up under the eye. Damn. So the bullet went straight through the prominent part of the cheek on the outer side of the eye socket. All right, so it is this bone. Oh, that's the bone I fucked up, man. I fucked that bone up last year in the damn wreck. Hit my face on the goddamn dashboard. And shit burned my face off almost. Zygomatic bone. Okay. So we know what the zygomatic bone is. If you hear me say zygomatic, everyone point to the cheek or to the eye. One of them. It says this bone here. All right, so he got hit in the zygomatic bone. All right. Put a one in the chat if you knew what a zygomatic bone was. Put a one in the chat. I want to see who our uh, RNs and doctors are. <laughs> so the zygomatic bone is what got him fucked up. All right. Yeah, my eyebrows straight. It just looked like a little part in it now, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be wearing a hat until I leave. You know, I'm getting my last haircut on Wednesday. You know, I ain't leaving the country without a fresh fade. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't afford to get two haircuts within a week span. The hairline is already going backwards. <laughs> You're not getting me. <laughs> Cute pisky. But the zygomatic bone got black, black, bow. Toe the fuck up. And all of this traces back to this man right here. And what is he doing? What is he going to be doing, y'all? What is he doing? What is he doing, y'all? Because Vic is about to blow up the whole spot with this mistake he made last season. But we also know that this mistake ties in with Tommy. But we already know that Tommy is the devil. And Tommy brought all the drama to Chicago. But this one little body has witnesses. Now, the only way that I can see Vic getting from up under this body is Vic has to get rid of this witness. But Vic doesn't know that there's actually a witness. But that's where Tommy and Diamond come into play, where they're trying to get any inside information. But D-Mag messed that up because he killed Bennigan, which means we got to go to Tyrone Reeves as the next one on the spot. But we're not talking about their story. We're trying to figure out what the fuck is Vic going to do. Because remember, in this episode, Vic's not even knowing about the body. Vic got convinced by his sister to kill his dad. Another body on top of a body that he caught two weeks ago on top of the body that he caught last season. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm you see how these mistakes are piling up for Vic? You see this? Hand on head means I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. That's the only thing hand on head mean. Pause. <laughs> it means something else too. But in this type of situation, when we're looking at body language. We know hand on the head me. I don't know what the fuck happening. This is past the hands on hips. Hands on hips is confused. Hands on head mean I'm done. It's over with. There's no way out of this. And we've seen this over and over for Vic. Because he's letting Claudia play with his mind. Claudia is actually manipulating everybody. As far as Claudia, no mistakes in my book. Because she's doing everything for herself. Now, as far as Vic... Vic is getting everybody in trouble with the shenanigans he was doing in season one. Now, I asked Brillo the other day when we was on his channel, I think it was Saturday, does he think that Claudia's bodies are going to start piling back up? My lap and a uh, stank butt. But right now, no one even knows about those bodies. But Vic's bodies are on the table. They're trying to find out who Tommy Egan is. And that's why when I said in the trailer, when we seen Stacey Marks pulling up on Tommy, Tommy is going to be talking to them, but it makes more sense now because we've seen what Stacey Marks was doing when she was talking in an interrogation room. She was trying to insinuate that it was Tommy by pointing at the thing. So she's going to be trying to get Tommy to talk, but really, they're not going to have anything on Tommy. It's all going to fall back on who? Victor Flynn. Vic is going to be the one that they're going to put the pressure point on. You know what I'm saying? They're going to call this, the, 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 they're going to put the choke code on, they're going to have to. Because he going to do some talking. At this point, he don't know what's going on. The the If you say any word that starts with the letter G, you might see Vic crying. Gloria. Ah! Hey, Vic, go to the store. Ah! Hey, get over here. Ah! You never know with Vic, but we can't trust Vic. Vic is unstable at this point. 
right now his sister is in his head you remember on i think it was called independence day independence day there was a there was a body right and on the side on the side there was a little latch by the ear and it opened up and there was a little bitty alien there little mister i called him little mister he was in there he's like a micro machine he was like in the world is on orion's belt orion's belt that's how Vic's body is right now, unless Claudia controls him. He doesn't know anything. He's to the point where, listen, if it means sacrificing everybody, so be it. So be it. Victor Flynn is potentially the one that could tear up everything. Victor Flynn can implicate Tommy. He could say some shit about Janar. He could say some shit about the family. Doyle, he got the two bodies. It's just piling up for Vic. It's piling up for Vic. What else? Who else is Vic into it with? Who else is Vic into it with? Because he got the two bodies. He got the two bodies. We got the witness that's dropping back. We got Claudia in his head. You see what I'm saying? No, nah, it ain't no grace time. This is the power universe. Tommy had zero grace period. When Keisha got popped, Tommy was on the block. When Holly got popped, oh, yeah, Tommy did that. Tommy was back on the block. When Tommy killed his own child, Tommy didn't have a grace moment. Tommy got back on the block. This is the power universe. Now, if we want to wait and waste the whole season, we can go over to that other show in Chicago, and we can waste a day or two. But this, there's no time to think. It's time to react. The only thing Vic can do is give her that witness and his sister. If Vic gets rid of Claudia, oh yeah, Men in Black Independence Day had Will Smith in there. Y'all knew what I was talking about, the little thing with the Zio, uh, whatever that bone was. We don't even know what that bone structure was no more. Y'all knew what I was talking about. Zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone. You detach the face from the zygomatic bone. Man, let me get my hands on a noisy cricket. Y'all over here playing around thinking Vic ain't Zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. I like that. The zygomatic bone. Hmm. Oh, the zygomatic. Oh, so when I be sleeping, you know, you used to be sleeping in class. You were sleeping on the zygomatic bone. Huh? Yeah, you should sleep on the zygomatic bone. All right. They should have taught us that in school. At least we would have learned something. But right now, Vic, he's a little bit above the zygomatic bone. He's on the cranium. <laughs> he's on the cranium. Vic in there like this. Kill dad? Man, let me tell you something, Vic. We on your side, but it's going to be tough. What do you think is going to come out of the, the witness? Is the witness going to give up more information or we're done with her? And they just going to be coming after uh, Vic. I used to be toe up in class. Tommy didn't know Holly was pregnant. Man, I don't give a damn. <laughs> he knew she was a junkie. <laughs> Is this witness going to come back and expose Vic, or are the police going to start going after Tommy? Because I know Stacy Marks. Remember, she's in control of the the whole task force. Now they they got information on Vic. Now that might be a tough. Yeah. Well, they just arrested Vic a couple of episodes ago. They had got to let him out. I don't think anything is going to stick on Tommy as far as this goes, but they might bring Vic in for questioning. They're going to have to at this point. What you think? Because the only way that they're going to know that there's a witness is if they bring Vic in or, or hear me out. 
Hold on. Give me a second. Let me work it, JT. Work it. What movie is that from? Work it, JT. Work it. Work it, JT. Work it. Uh, let me see. Power. Oh, I ain't got the OG trailer. Damn. I thought I still had it. I ain't got that motherfucker on here. Five Harpies, hell yeah. Work it, JT. Work it. Hey, I need a wingman. I need somebody to play Shy Brother with. Me. But I'm going to be the brother that's actually talking to it. Y'all play the Shy Brother. I'm going to be the one talking to him. But they got to bring somebody in because that's the only way they're going to find out about this witness because no one even knows that she's alive. Until this episode, I didn't even think about that killing. My whole mind was shot. Like, man, whatever happened in the first season, we don't even give a fuck. We starting fresh. Miss Cheryl said RIP to the witness. So that might be Tommy telling Vic, Vic, you need to get the witness because they brought me in and said that they had a witness. And you remember the security guard is still alive also. The security guard knows who was there. He knows it was Vic. I don't know if he knows it was Tommy, though. Paulie's wife might off Walter Flynn. I don't know, man. Nah, you know what I would like to see? Paulie getting with Tommy. Paulie getting with Tommy, because think about it. Either Polly is going to partner up with the Flynn siblings, but he's not going to have any power. And they're not going to really listen to him. But if Vic and Claudia get rid of Walter, that's going to leave Polly out on the island. He can talk to Tommy because him and Tommy never had any issues. You know what I mean? So he could talk to Tommy and they can make some shit happen. Hey, Trench, we on the same page. Tommy and Polly would actually be pretty damn dope. Because think about it. Vic, he don't have any control of anything right now. There's a witness out here. Polly knows some shit. Polly is cool with everybody. Everyone respects Polly in the streets. Now, the only way that we're going to know about the witness is either Tommy or Vic get pulled in there and they say, we have a witness that may have seen you as something. And then that can make them either link up and go do something. Or Polly lets Tommy know, hey, Vic and Claudia, they getting a little out of control out here. You need to stop them before they do some shit. You know what I'm saying? And give him the heads up that they potentially working with the Serbs because Walter pushed him out, even though we know he's loyal to Walter. Now, I know we jumping all over the place, but this all ties back to Vic. Let me, I, I get it there. I get it there. Because with Vic and Claudia working together, Claudia is going to be in charge. Vic is really just going to still be the same character he is now. It's just up under his sister taking orders. Now, he could either go to Polly and say that Claudia is out of control or tell tell Polly that, hey, Claudia is trying to partner with the Serbs, and that would be Polly going to talk to Tommy. You see what I'm saying? Polly's like, hey, Tommy, hey, look, you need to, hey, try to do something or stop the Serbs, because if not, then that means Brendan Doyle and them going to come over, and they're going to really take over some shit. So it's a lot of stuff going on, but all of it ties back to Vic with this damn one witness. Because Walter told him not to do anything with Tommy. Oh, shit. It's getting good now. It's getting good now. Damn. Hey, that Tommy and Polly, that could work. That could work. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to be like Tommy and Diamond. But I'm thinking Polly might be giving up some information because he knows that the kids are going to be too far out of control, which is going to mess it up for everybody. You remember, Dublin is still in charge. Brendan Doyle is here, but Brendan Doyle got some power. And remember, Brendan said they got all the power back in Dublin. He's just the mediator that came over here. So with Vic not really fucking with Brendan Doyle because he knew that Brandon Doyle was fucking his sister, Vic might try to do some silly shit, which Polly is going to need to stop because if he's not listening to Claudia, he ain't listening to Walter, he ain't going to do nothing but make the block even hotter. And we already got a body on him. Oh, Lord. Oh, Vic. Come on, Vic. Jeez Louise, what up, Eric? Man, we just found out that Vic is really the linchpin, not Tommy fucking Egan. This nigga Vic can really fuck the whole universe up. Look at Vic. Let me tell you something. 
Anyone in their mug shot biting their bottom lip is a nigga that's about to do one thing and one thing only. Gonna, 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 I'm gonna tell. Look at everybody else is in here just normal. This nigga Vic in here like this. Oh, yeah. They about to bring Vic on in this month. And how they get a goddamn mug shot of Tommy? Wait a fucking minute. Did Tommy ever get arrested in OG power? Did Tommy ever get arrested in OG power? Where the fuck did they get this picture from? Did they just make this picture out of AI? Where did they get a, a, a jail picture of Tommy? When's the last time Tommy went to jail? Someone please tell me, when's the last time Tommy went to jail? Where's DeMarcus at? DeMarcus Bond, somebody tell me when Tommy went to jail so we can try to figure out when did they get this current up-to-date picture of Tommy fucking Egan that's been dead for several months because they said that Ghost died a couple of months. Uh, no, Ghost died like several months back and he died after that. Where'd they get an updated photo of Tommy in motherfucking Cook County Jail? Someone, someone answer that. Someone answer that for me. RC said, Angela got Tommy arrested. Okay. So, all right. Give me give me some more facts, y'all. Give me some more facts. I need more facts. When did Tommy get arrested? When did Tommy get arrested? I need, I need more facts. Tommy got locked up season three. Okay. Angela got Tommy arrested. Okay. Hold on, guys. Give me a second. Give me a second. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to figure something out. Hold on. Give me something. Zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. That's the word of the day. Zygomatic bone. That's the bone from here to here. Okay, let me see something. Tommy Egan, season three jail. Tommy Egan, power, season three jail. He got arrested at the hotel bus, didn't he? Uh, what hotel bus? What hotel? Last season? Trench Game, man. Yeah, with Lobos? What, what season was that? What season was Tommy in jail? Okay, here we go right here. Tommy getting booked in prison, arrested by Angela. But watch this. But watch this. Because I wanted all y'all to give me the facts. Watch this. Let's see something. Oh, let me. I'm going to take this off the okay. screen. Hold on. Tommy Egan took a mugshot in a button down in a motherfucking leather jacket. When did they get a fucking picture of Tommy Egan in fucking jail? When? Don't make me do this, man. I got to do it, though. I got to do it. Oh, what else Mo talking about? Oh, Mo, you tripping? He did get arrested. Oh, he did. Oh, I forgot all about that. Season two, episode nine, he did get arrested. But wait a minute. How did he get arrested in New York City but have the same background as motherfucking Victor Flynn in Chicago? When did he get arrested in Chicago? When did he get arrested in Chicago? That's what I want to know. How do they have an updated picture of fucking Tommy Egan in Chicago, the same place as Vic and these other four fucking suspects in Chicago? He's dead and they ain't keep him locked up. Don't do this to me, power. I watch this shit. I know what's going on in the streets, nigga. It's CBI business. It's CBI business. I fucking do this for a living. This is what I do. I talk power. When did they get a picture of Tommy fucking Egan? When? When did they get this picture? I told you, Vic is about to fuck it all up. This nigga about to be snitching. This nigga Vic was already in there. He didn't gave them a picture of Tommy. They didn't remove the background and put it on here to make it look like he got locked up in Chicago. This ain't even what he was wearing when he got in process in New York. The fans is playing games. Oh, Mo, don't do it to him. Don't do it to him. Don't do it to him. I got to do it to him. though. I got to do it to him. I got to do it, too. Because they be saying Mo don't know what the fuck he talking about. Somebody said this nigga Mo ain't top five of all time. I said, you a motherfucking lie. I don't know who said it, but if I ain't on your top 
hey, it is what it is, nigga, but I'm a boy, I'm going to point this shit out to you, man. Wait a minute. When did Tommy get arrested in Chicago? When did Tommy get arrested in Chicago? Come on, Polly. Man, let Polly uh, link up with Tommy. Matter of fact, let's get Vic the fuck up out of here. I think Vic gave them this picture. I think Vic gave them this picture. Exactly. Selena said he's the only one with a mug shot without a shadow. Look, they all got shadows. You can see the shadow over here. They, hey, this is really AI. Stacy Marks put this. Oh, that's why DeFranco was upset. Tommy's picture wasn't even supposed to be on this motherfucker. Oh, Stacy Marks, you play a dirty game. You play a dirty game. Uh oh. Bobby DeFranco is the best police officer we've ever seen. Facts. Stacy Marks is just as bad as Jenny Sullivan now. Oh, Lord. She didn't put a computer generated picture of Tommy Egan in the fucking photo lineup. And then she pointed at it like, you see what I did there, but didn't put no shadow. Oh, oh. Oh, that's why I tell y'all, always get a lawyer. Oh, uh-huh. It's starting to make sense. It's starting to make sense. Sneaky Stacy. I like that, 626. Sneaky Stacy. Double S. Oh, <laughs> No, y'all didn't. No, y'all didn't. Uh-uh. Hey, the writer strike is over. Well, they got a tentative deal. Y'all need to bring me in and let me just clean this up for y'all. Let me let me just go in and clean this up for y'all. Unless, unless next episode, now nah, 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 I'm gonna give power a hundred percent credit. If next episode Bobby DeFranco says, Why did you put that picture of Tommy on there? We never had a picture of Tommy. If they say that, oh, <laughs> round of applause power. If they say in the next episode that she put this picture on there, round of applause for tying that, mm -hmm, tying it up. It's a crazy game, man. It's a crazy game. Sneaky Stacy. Okay, Vic, you might be off the hook because right now, all this, we got to throw all this out. This some bullshit right here. This some bullshit charges. You know, they need some trumped up charges right now. You know what I mean? This is what the MAGA supporters feel like is happening to Trump. Like, even though we seen niggas do some fucked up shit, they saying that he ain't did it. So right now, I'm saying that Vic ain't did shit because I can't trust the district attorney. We can't. This right here just is Nolan Boyd. We can't trust her. Ah, uh, fuck that, Vic. Pause. Stacy Marks, your ass is mine. Come on now. Come on down. Nah, let's talk about Stacy real quick. Hold on, hold on, give me a second because Stacy Mark's been fucking up these last couple of episodes. I mean, we can't just let this slide. Let me see where we at. Force shows is that shows force? Damn! Oh, I got the pictures. Never mind. I got the steals. Uh, let me see. Do I got it? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Damn! Hey, that ain't that something? Who would ever thunk it? We thought, well, I ain't going to say we. I thought, I thought Stacey Marks was going to be legit. You know what? I failed, y'all. This, this is the second video I did this year where I, I was off. I thought Stacey Marks was going to be straight up and down. But never mind. She playing the same games that all the feds play. She ain't nothing but a, the, the black version of Jenny Sullivan. Oh, man. Let me see something. Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. Stacey, Stacey, Stacey. Episode two was it that we seen Stacy? You know what? We should have realized it. We should have realized that Stacy Marks. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I, I I was blinded. You know what I mean? That that's on me. That's I apologize. But we should have known that nobody. And y'all know exactly what I'm about to say, too. Nobody ever goes into a meeting 
that they're serious about and they look like this. No one looks like this when they go into a meeting. Now, I was fooled. I thought it was the wig. I said, she's going to be doing her J-O. You know what I mean? But the whole time she was in here bullshit. You know what I mean? She in here bullshit. She over here. But guess what? She ain't do a damn thing. Remember? We thought that she was collecting all of the data. We thought that she was piecing things together. But really, it was the FBI, Agent Vargas, and the DEA agent. Sorry, I don't remember her name. But shout out to Brian Keyes, Agent Vargas. They been doing all the work. Guess what? Guess what? She ain't did shit. Bobby Franco, the Franco came in and said, I got this murder out here. I can get more information. But we found out last week that she was in this for herself because she's trying to run for the mayor. So now it makes sense with that Photoshop. Now she's just putting charges out here to try to get anything to stick. It's one of those <laughs> trying to find some shit out. But guess what? That ain't going to work. Now it might work on Vic. The only problem is we don't care. We already got a plan to get Vic the fuck about it. We're going to bring Polly in, team him up with Tommy, knock off the Claudia and uh, Vic duo, whatever the fuck it is, because they about to turn the power universe upside down. One wrong move from the Flynn family can fuck up everything. But Stacey Marks, on the other hand, this is going to fuck up everything. This whole task force, now it makes sense why Tommy was able to go to New York because they're going to drop the ball. Even though we knew they were going to drop the ball, but now we know who we need to look at. It ain't the agents that are out in the field, the FBI and the DEA. It ain't Bobby DeFranco. It's Stacy Marks. Sneaky Stacy. It's her. This whole time we've been fooled. We thought that this sister was helping out, cleaning up the community. The whole time she bullshit. She's just trying to run for the mayor. She's just trying to run for the mayor. But remember, Chicago PD don't fuck with her. So we already knew that she was fucking up. You see what I'm saying? But we were just letting all this go. We were like, oh, it, it don't matter. This might be the best task force administrative group we've ever had in any power universe, only to find out that the head of the task force is the crooked one. Stacey Marks, you got some explaining to do. Now, I don't make none of this up. I'm just telling y'all what they showed on the TV. They said, Mo, here go the show. Let us know what you think. I said, all right. Let me let me let me let me see what's going on here. Let me just see what's going on here. So I sat back, you know what I'm saying? I sat back. Okay, okay. Episode one was decent, two was good, three straight. Episode four, that's a good fuck. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Episode two, let me let me just scroll back. Stacy Marks. Hmm. Anyone that looks too invested in the meeting, they ain't doing shit. They just don't want you to ask a question. They trying to make it seem like they in deep thought. She forgot that I used to do this shit in high school. You be taking a test. You trying to look over and see what somebody else is writing. And when the teacher look at you looking up, acting like you thinking, that's what Stacey Marks is doing. Because guess what? Stacey Marks ain't in the streets. Stacey Marks is the district attorney, but she ain't got no other cases. The feds is out here. Their job is to follow Tommy around. Bobby DeFranco's job is to solve murders. Everyone is doing their job but Stacey Marks. What has Stacey done? Has she put any she put anything forward? Because last time that I checked, this gentleman right here was the one calling the shots. Remember, her boss is the one that said, Let me make some calls. What has Stacey Marks done this season? DA is Clarissa uh, Harwick. All right, bad that so someone explained to me what has stacy marks done what has she done remember he said she couldn't get the task force he had to go make some calls what has she done not a damn thing not a, when that little girl got shot what did she do nothing bobby defranco dropped her ass off because she don't do nothing oh stacy marks you didn't fooled us four episodes but no more no more. We're going to be watching you. We're going to be watching you. You trying to slip up under the radar and become mayor, but not on my watch, because I'm going to let everybody know the truth about Chicago. Stacey Marks ain't no mayor of mine. Stacey Marks, hell no. Stacey Marks might, you might get pulled over for speed, and Stacey Marks said you got a brick of cocaine in the trunk. We never know with Stacey Marks now. We know that she's the dirty one. We all been saying, where's the dirty cop at? We thought Bennigan was it. No, we got to go higher up the food chain. Stacy fucking Marks. Oh my goodness.
It had to be a sister. Won't they do it? Put a won't they do it in the chat for your boy, Mo, man. Why are you so with the Damn. Damn. What up, Torian? We just found out that Stacy Marks is the true villain. Look at her. She's yelling at her boss. Why are you yelling at your boss and you ain't did a god darn thing? Stacy Marks. Oh. Hey, Eric, watch this. She wasn't at any of the takedowns? No, no, no. Watch this. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let me find. Let me find. Come on. Come on. Mo. Don't do this today, man. It's Monday, Mo. You got to chill. They say, Mo, you got to chill. I say, all right, I'm going to chill a little bit. Hold on. I'm going to chill a little bit. Where's Stacey at here? Why none of these guys were prosecuted? Huh? Why weren't none of these people prosecuted? Tommy Egan has a fake mug shot and he's on the street. Bobby DeFranco had then arrested 19 niggas in two episodes. Bobby DeFranco is the task force. Vargas and uh Hardwick, they are the surveillance team. What the fuck does Stacy Marks do? Ain't no one going to jail. Ain't no one talking, no one doing nothing. Stacy Marks, oh, this whole time I was rooting for you, girl. You gonna have to put some charges on somebody. Bobby DeFranco investigating three murders, three murders, Chewy, Little K, Little Girl, drug bust. That's three things that he did in three episodes. Remember, he wasn't in episode one. This is episode four. Three episodes. I always tell y'all, three out of ten niggas is real. One is Mo, the other one is Bobby DeFranco, and we trying to find this last one, but Stacey Marsden ain't you. <laughs> okay, then. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Stacey Marks. Oh. Stacey Marks is going to ruin DeFranco. Stacy Marks is going to be the reason DeFranco does not make it to the next season. Oh. They can't get rid of Bobby. They can't get rid of Bobby. They always trying to take the real ones, man. Take Stacy Marks. Bobby DeFranco was the only one doing their job. And if we didn't have Bobby DeFranco doing their job, then the, 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 the task force and the police presence will be weak. We got the surveillance, but he's actually taking that surveillance from the feds and applying it to the streets. They're connecting the dots. Remember, the feds are working, but who's working? Who's working? I'll tell you who's working. Vargas and Hardwick. They working, and who else is working? Oh, Bobby DeFranco. You see, they did not give the evidence to Stacey Marks. They had to give it to Bobby DeFranco because he's actually in the streets. And what did she say? Clarissa said he's messing with the forbidden fruit. Mireya Garcia. Now, what, let's, let's see what Stacey Marks' reaction is. Look, Bobby DeFranco said, I'm going to get out in the streets. Clarissa's like, yep, we got new evidence, boss. Look at Stacy Marks. Who does she think she is? Goofy from Goof Troop? Who stands like this in a goddamn meeting where we talking about bringing down some drug kingpins? This motherfucker ain't here like this. Yeah. Stacy Marks been bullshitting this whole time in our face. I love Stacy Marks, but damn it, she ain't doing shit. Our tax dollars are going to waste because of Stacy. Look at her. Who does this? Who does this in the office? The district attorney in there? I got something for y'all. Hold on. I'll get this Tommy Egan off of here because this ain't what this ain't the picture that Tommy and Tommy got a buzz cut on this picture. They not fooling me. Ain't no way they fooling me. Oh damn! Hold on, my screen it went off. We hey hey I hey I thought Stacy Marks was legit. I don't give a damn. I root for the police sometimes. If we don't root for the police, then it's going to be a boring-ass show.
Hold on, let me see something. Shout out to my dog Brillo. Shout out to my dog Brillo. If Brillo's in here, this one's for you, my boy. This one's for you, my G. Hold on, let me let me get it right. Let me get it right. Give me a second. Oh, hold on. Let me. I I I, I can just find it. Hold on. Let me let me let me get this right. Let me get this straight, man. Hold on. I got y'all. You know, it's up to me. You know what I mean? Sometimes, sometimes it take the real. Sometimes it take the real to be the real. You know what I mean? Sometimes it take the real to be the real. That's all I can do. That is all I can do for y'all is just expose y'all to the truth. This is how goofy Stacy Marks is at work, man. She ain't doing no work. She ain't doing a damn thing at work, man. She ain't doing shit at work. And y'all want me to believe that Stacy Marks ain't the villain of the power universe. Now, I'm not saying she looked like goofy. I'm just saying she got that goofy stance. Look, they are at work and just said that Tommy fucking Egan, the guy that she just tried to place a murder on, is fucking with the cartel sister. And she's in here laughing it up. <laughs> we got him. I thought the feds was well, she ain't even she ain't even police. So we don't love the feds. She's a district attorney. She is a motherfucking uh, servant of the people. She ain't the feds. She is not the feds. She's just a prosecutor. Oh man, Stacy Marks, they didn't got you. They didn't played you, girl. You well, no, you played yourself because Bobby DeFranco told us she's in this to run for mayor. This is her husband. This is her husband. He knows all the ins and outs. Oh man. Put them back to back, take a screenshot. <laughs> That's her picture for the board. I got y'all. When I, like I said, let me get set up, man. We're gonna hey. When I get settled, man, we're going to take this shit to another level, man. We're going to have some fun, man. Shout out to Stacey Marks, though, man. We It's all funny. We're not saying she looks like Goofy. I'm just saying I remember Goofy had that. <laughs> hey, you want to go? <laughs> like, hey, Goofy. <laughs> And Goofy is a fucking cow. I always thought this nigga was a dog. This nigga's a cow. <laughs> you find it funny that I never did this with Jenny or Blanca. Shit, yeah, I have. They just ain't never had this same exact pose. I didn't do this. Y'all can't get on me for this. I didn't write this shit and tell motherfucking Stacy Marks to goddamn cross your arms and smile in the office. I didn't write this shit. It ain't me giving him a break. If you got a problem with Stacy Marks looking like this, you need to holler at power. Them motherfucking writers are off strike. I'll bring the writer on this motherfucker and ask him, why'd you have Stacy Marks looking like goddamn goof? I ain't do this. They did this. I get on Jenny ass all the time. Man, I got like 10 rants on Jenny Sullivan. This is the first time I even said anything negative about Stacey Marks. I fuck with Stacey Marks. My prediction was Stacey Marks was going to do shit by the book. Unfortunately, Stacey Marks is a fucking crook. I didn't write this shit. Stacey Marks is the one that had the two fingers pointing to Tommy Egan with a motherfucking artificial intelligent picture on the motherfucker. I didn't create this shit. All I can do is take the story and tell y'all what's on the story. <laughs> I didn't do this shit. I didn't do this shit. Now, Pluto's a dog. Goofy is a cow. Goofy is a cow. Well, like I said, Kendall, hey, you my girl, you can get in your feelings all you want. All I'm saying is if I remember a character that looked like somebody, I'll bring that motherfucker. I don't give a fuck who it is. I can't help. They both leaning back 
with their arms crossed, smiling. This ain't no serious situation. Look at Bobby DeFranco's face. Why is she smiling? This ain't no laughing matter. No one came in the office smiling. Let's see. Let's go back to the beginning. Nope. Let's let's count how many smiles are going on in this office with this new evidence. Uh, one. Nope. That's zero. Zero smiles. No smile. Okay. Let's see. Who's next? Who's next? Oh, we got two smiles in the photo, but that is not in the office. All right. Let me see. Oh, that's two no smiles. Come on. Come on. It's got to be a smile somewhere. Oh, three no smiles. Uh oh. Where we at? Where we at? Come on. Oh, damn. We got one person in here smiling. We supposed to be doing business. We supposed to be doing business. Yeah. Lean back. Lean back. They had her in there looking like goofy, and we found out that her ass was pointing Tommy Egan. I didn't make it up. I didn't make it up. I'm just showing y'all what's happening in the show. So, Stacy Marks, we're going to have to get on you a little bit because she's trying to set up Tommy Egan. Now, I don't care who it is. Tommy Egan is the star. If you try to bring down Tommy, you're on our bad side. That means you too, Bobby DeFranco. But at least you're doing some work. Stacey Marks ain't did a damn thing in four episodes. Damn. That grin means her mind, she was already scheming. I, hey. I, I, hey. All I'm doing is telling y'all what I see. If I see some shit, it is what it is. It is what it is. Damn. Oh, well. Stacy Marks is crooked as of right now. So what do you guys think? Is she going to be able to become mayor or are they going to probably stop that at some point? I mean, of course, we know that they're going to fold. But. How is it going to be because of her doing some shit? Some. Oh, maybe she maybe her going after Tommy is going to fuck up everything. And DeFranco's going to, Bobby's going to say something about it. Like, hey, man, you've been trying to go after Tommy, but you're not actually doing things by the book. And that could mess up the whole situation. The FBI. Yeah, this is the FBI. Damn. And I know we not talking. Man, we just did a whole show with five white girls. I was on their head from the beginning to the end. The rooter to the tutor. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. Put a won't they do it in the chat, man. It's my channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, won't they do it? Uh, won't they do it? They say with the Lord and the good woman, a man shall find his way. But Bobby DeFranco, he kind of confused because he thought this good woman was actually here to help out. But she running for mayor. She trying to put Tommy up under the bus. It ain't looking good right now, Stacey. Someone going to have to change this up for you. I don't know who, but somebody going to have to do a little something, something. All right, who we got next? So we talked about Vic, which led us to, uh, not Claudia, but uh, to Stacy. So from Stacy, let me see. Well, we know what Jannard is on. But Jannard, he, he he just messed up in the game, man. We already know, like, his mistake was last week, catching that body. He didn't do nothing this week that we can really be ashamed of, you know? Because what did he do? He fought uh, Gray Skull. Grace Gold left the gang. Probably gonna go back over to CBI. Well, he owes Mirkovich. He did get the information on Miguel, though. He definitely got the information on Miguel. So we gotta give him some kind of credit. We gotta give him some kind of credit. So I know this is Monday mistakes, but on a scale of one to ten, what would you give Janard? in the Miguel situation. What would you give Jannard in the Miguel situation? Is that is that a is that a winnable case right there finding out that he has diabetes or are we saying he was just saved by the bell? It's all right cuz I'm saved by the it's all right cuz I'm saved by the it's all right cuz I'm saved by Maria. You know what I mean? I got to give Jannar some kind of credit. But then again, Cheryl is right. Miss Cheryl is right. With the baby powder, that's a little ridiculous. 
That's a little ridiculous. Damn. Well, I don't, I don't even know if that pack's getting moved because there's no one in there's no one in treason anyway. There's no one in treason to even move the work. So that's the only problem about that. They did do the baby powder, but then we seen him own the powder. So we don't even know if he was the one on the powder or not. You know what I mean? Like, was he the one? Was he using the, the powder down powder or he was just using the regular? You know what I'm saying? Before it stepped on. I don't really know with this nigga. Jannard on some other shit, though. Tommy will take out Bobby over Stacy. Tommy doesn't know about. Well, he did just see. Okay, okay, I see where you're going with that. He did just see Bobby. He did know him and um him and Diamond know about the uh about the task force because they were trying to get information from Benningham. But how close is well? DeFranco has been asking questions, so he could get close, and that would give Tommy. Damn, but they get rid of him. That means the feds are gonna have to step up because he's Chicago PD. He he's a detective. But they already got a drug sweep. Diamond said that none of them are gonna tell. There are four guys left. And other. Yeah, Kendall, you know what I mean? It was so the four dudes that left were with Gray Skull. And then it was um, the homeboy, the dude with the gun, the guy with the shorts and the hoodie on. I don't remember the other. Oh, and the other dude had striped, the pinstripe shirt on. So what is Treason going to do at this point? They can't move product. Miguel got him in a chokehold. He caught a body. He didn't need to. He needs to lay low. He's always high. See, everything Jannard does is a mistake. Now, do I think that Jannard killing little K is worse than what Vic potentially has? No. The reason I say Vic and his body from season one is a bigger deal than Jannard's because they know that Tommy Egan was with Jannard. I mean, not with Jannard, but with Vic. And also, Vic is with the Flynn family. Treason ain't nothing. The only people that think of treason of being something is the Serbs because he thinks that treason is working with CBI now because of Claudia. So right now, Jannard is really just skating up under the scene. You know what I mean? Jannard killing little K, yeah, they're going to come looking for him. But that would cut off everything. Once they get Jannard, unless Jannard says something, then that's the end of it. But Vic, they can link that to the whole Flynn family and tear up everything. On top of, we got Dublin and Brendan Doyle on his ass. You see what I'm saying? So Vic is really in most shit because Vic can go in there and tell on Tommy. Vic can go in there and tell on the family. He can go in there and tell on Brendan Doyle. Vic got a whole bunch of outs that he could tell on. Jannard is really just in the streets. It's either jail or dead. You see what I'm saying? Vic has an opportunity to get out of all of this, but he also has the opportunity to do the most damage. Because we already know what happens. If they get rid of Walter, that family is done. That means Dublin, the Flins, is, uh, there's no more Flins. It's Dublin and then there's Chicago. It ain't no more Flynn family in Chicago. It's going to be Doyle. Damn. See, so that, hey, and like DeMarcus keeps saying, we know that Vic up under that pressure is going to tell. Gonna, 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 I'm gonna tell. He did the setup, then he caught that body. See, the Flynn family has a lot of shit on their head because once they get into all this extra nonsense, if Brendan Doyle is already here, he's going to know firsthand what's going on in Chicago. And once you understand what's going on, then you can go ahead and execute a plan. And Vic ain't hard to find. We all know where Vic is at. It's only one or two places. The graveyard, the suite, the liquor store. That's the only place he go. He went to the club and went, he went to the club and was crying. 
He went to the club and was crying. So Jannar, I don't think Jannar's mistakes or yeah, he making some mistakes. He's making the block hot. But I don't think Jannar would, you know what I'm saying? He's not gonna implicate anybody. I, I believe that Vic would. <laughs> I don't know. I just got a funny feeling, Paul, that Vic's gonna get in there and do some talking. Cause they gotta question him so they can find out about this witness. All they know is there's a task force out there. And think about it. Vic knows everything. Vic knows everything. He knows about his sister and Dahlia. Remember, she killed Stank, but he knew about that. He knows about Tommy. He knows about Diamond. He knows about Jannard. He got his family he can tell on. He got Dub. Well, they ain't about to know what Dublin, but he can tell on Brendan Doyle. He can tell on the Serbs. Because remember, Claudia is bringing him in with the Serbs. So Vic is really, a hey, he's really connected to everybody. Man, hit that like button for me, please. Let's get 50 likes in here. Not asking for much. Not asking for much. We just looking at Jannar, and we like, hey, Jannar, you might not be as bad as we thought. Yeah, you fucked up. But but if we being honest, Jannar's fuck-ups aren't going to mess up as much as what Vic could mess up. Because not only could Vic mess it up by just getting caught, which he probably will, He's going to tell. Jannar will probably get caught, go to jail, and not say nothing. See what I'm saying? But then again, he on that shit. What y'all think? Y'all think Jannar on that shit would tell on Tommy? Do you think Jannar on that shit would tell on Tommy? I don't believe Jannar is going to tell nothing, but they been showing Jannar on that shit. What if he get in there... (laughs) Tommy, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> what if he just say some shit, man? This is Jannar, man. This is Jannar. He got mad. He thought little K was wearing a wire and, 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 and choked him out in the front seat. Jannar on that shit again. <laughs> Damn, Jannar. See, I want to see Jannar, you know what I'm saying, shake back, but it, 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 it's a it's a long road. This is like the 12-step program. You know what I mean? It's like the 12-step program. Yeah, we got we got to slowly watch him integrate himself back into the civilian world. Now, we also know on my channel, once a junkie, always a junkie, though. That's that, that's like the code we got to live by over here because we know how shit can get. You know what I mean? We know how shit can get. Now, I'm not saying Jannard is a snitch. I'm saying Jannard on that shit is a snitch. Could be, uh, you know what I'm saying? Could be. I've got all about. Sh- oh, yeah, we gotta. All right, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about Shanti real quick because Jannard's story. I forgot about that. I forgot all about Shanti. Shanti knows about the body. Oh, Jannard. I forgot all about Shanti. She know about the damn body. Never mind. Nah, Vic's still worse. Vic's still worse. Because what's she going to do? Tell on Jannard? You know what I mean? That's just going to get Jannard in trouble. That'll just be his own personal mistake. It ain't like fucking up the universe. So Jannar, you all right, you get by, man. You you might be next in line, but he did tell Shanti about the damn. And she know he on that shit again. Oh, well, not again, but she know he on oh damn Shanti. Shanti cool too. She folded, she folded, but she cool as hell. She hold it down though. She hold it down. She know that Jannar, man, he ain't all the way there. He ain't all the way there, so she do hold him down a little bit. But it's like, come on, Jannar, we trying to help, bro. He told her straight up, man. Look at him. What is what is he doing, man? We all know this pose. We all know this pose. You know you did fucked up, right? She said, man, I, I stepped to little cake, man. I did what I did. She said, what? She said, wait, are you on that shit? He's like, no, no, I ain't on that. I ain't on. I'm good. I'm good. I ain't on that shit. 
fucking on that shit. But I did kill Lil K. Damn. All right, man. We, we, damn, Janar, we're trying to go to another character. What is going to come of Shanti knowing about this body? Is Oh, man. Y'all think Shanti's going to end up telling? I think Shanti's going to hold it down. Just like we believe that Jannard ain't going to say nothing. I don't think she's going to say nothing. But Jannard could get on that shit and probably like attack her and think the same thing he did with Little K. You know what I mean? If he get on that stuff, we don't know where Jannard's mind really is at. Told nine people. Damn. Damn. I ain't going to lie to you, man. Damn. Jannard on some other shit. <laughs> Damn, why'd you tell her, man? Now she's going to be looking at him. She might start distancing herself from him. She might actually be the one to get this nigga right, though. Could y'all see her being a uh, help to try to get Jannard back on the right track? Or she probably just going to like start to distance herself. Damn, what if she tells Diamond? What if she goes to Diamond and tells Diamond that her that uh Gennaro needs help? Like he on that shit. You know what I mean? Cause she's the neutral party, and we know Diamond is cool. Diamond is chill. Cause I wanna see, I wanna see her like no matter what Gennaro goes through, well, not like to the extreme, like be the, like a legit ride or die and go down for some shit that this nigga did, but I want to see her help Gennaro out because I want to see Gennaro bounce, you know what I'm saying, bounce back in the game, you know what I mean? We're trying to see Jannar back in the game. We can't see him go to full chunky mode. He was almost there, but it was just two bags. It was just, well, technically four bags, but I broke that down. You got to go back and watch the the Brillo's live, but that, that's a whole other story. But it was two bags of H, technically four, that he was on. So he was at a low moment. But whenever he talks to Shanti, he gets... He's more level-headed. But it's just like when you start to question him, he get a little defensive. So he's a little more level headed whenever he's around her because she really been looking out for this dude, man. Since the first time we seen Shanti, she was giving no disrespect, Janar. She was giving this broke ass nigga money. <laughs> she was giving this nigga money. Every time we seen it, she was breaking them off five piece here, 10 piece there, 20 piece here. Huh? I want to invest in you. Here you go, 10. I'm going to get the kids on the block. I'm going to go make this money back. I'm going to go get this for you. I'm going to go do that. Only for Jannar to just basically spit in her face and say, nigga, I'm a junkie. I killed little K when she told this nigga not to kill little K. Damn, Jannar. We trying, man. We trying to get you on the right path, man. Now, I was going to go and roll my kids into this boxing gym, but then I looked up and seen this nigga Jannar. Now, I mean, Jannar don't really know each other like that. I know in the street he getting some money because I seen the Lamborghini parked outside. But then I was like, man, that nigga playing with his nose or something up there, ain't he? What the fuck is this? Like, nah, I ain't putting my kids in this boxing shit. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> but I think Shanti is legit, though. I don't think we I don't, we we don't have to look at Shanti sideways. Can we can we say that she's legit? All right, no no no. Let me do this. Let me do this. Queen gonna say, I think she would try to get him right, possibly back to CBI. If he flashed on her again, he's toast. He didn't like her hand movements. He checked nicely. He put her he put hands on her. It would be all over jail for a little K. Well, yeah, I mean yeah. I, 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 damn. I don't want to see them get rid of Jannard, though. I like Jannard's character. You know, I had my, 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 my little beef with him, Pauls, because he was trying to kill his brother. But I always like Jannard's character. It's just like, damn. And now, my dog, they got him on that shit, man. Let's get this straight. Let's, let's go ahead and document this now. We're going to go ahead and put this in the notes. Who are we trusting more? Mireya? Or Shanti. Mireya or Shanti. Who are we trusting more? Because I know a lot of people were saying, Mireya, we don't really trust her all the way because we know that she lied about being able to drive a stick shift. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Stick shift is crazy. Pause for that one and pause for that one. You know what I mean? But stick shift is crazy. Pause. 
I can trust Sean T more than I can trust Mireya. When Mireya, I mean, Mireya was driving that truck and they tried to dodge that damn train, I said, yeah, that's it. I'm not fucking with this girl. I'm not fucking with this girl. All right, bet. So we saying that we trust Shanti more. Let's go ahead and put that down. We trust Shanti. We trust Shanti over Mireya. Bet. Bet. All right, that's cool. He said, Mireya has a man. She is cheating. Oh, shit. I don't know if she said she had a Did she mention she had, she had a dude? I thought she was just fucking with Janar. Shanti and Diamond's correctional girl meet. Uh, when would they meet, though? Unless they met on the streets, they would never run into each other. You know what I mean? Because she's CBI and she's treason. So they would never have a reason to come in contact with each other unless it was something on the street or she was riding with uh riding with Jannar somewhere and they seen Diamond and her. But I don't think I don't think anyone knows that Diamond is messing with her because she's the correctional officer and, and she technically ain't supposed to be messing with former. I mean she can, but they they prefer you not because it could look like hey, y'all were messing around while you were locked up, and you know that's illegal. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know about the rules after you get out. But they've been keeping this low key, though. Oh, you're talking about Mireya. Yeah, Mireya does have, but she not. Did she did she cheat? All they did was dance a little bit. They had some Yaya's tacos and Tommy left. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. I didn't see nothing happen, at least. Maybe when Tommy came, but what? Well, Tommy didn't go back home because Tommy stayed at the damn barbershop. Oh, because of D-Mac. Oh, we didn't forget about you, D-Mac. We didn't forget about D-Mac. No, we got to talk about D-Mac ass because D-Mac really the one that fucked up everything. Now it's really over with. Now it's really over with. If it was up to me, Tommy Egan wouldn't be making out of season two. Locked up. Him and D-Mac. Mm-hmm. And the spinoff would be Power Book 5, Uncle Tommy. <laughs> D-Mac and Tommy do prison. You know what I mean? Because they ain't making it out of this season if it was up to me. Somebody's going to jail. Whether it's D-Mac for 25 to life or JP ass for the death penalty. Somebody ain't making it about a season two for this body of Bennigan. So I'm just going to be real with you. Somebody ain't making it. Now, I don't know if they're going to put that in the show, but somebody ain't making it. Fucking D-Mac, man. And they got my dog D Mag looking like, <laughs> damn, Uncle Tommy. I'm about to go join trees. And Tommy said, I'll fucking kill you. He said, All right, I was bullshitting. He said, I was bullshitting, Uncle Tommy. You know me, man. I don't, I don't even talk like that, Uncle Tommy. You know what I mean? I don't even, that ain't even me, Tommy. That ain't even me. I'm not even built like that, Tommy. That ain't even me, yo. Damn, D-Mac. So, D-Mac's mistakes stem back to last episode is what a lot of people say, but we already knew that D-Mac was toting that steel in season one. Now, was he hitting anything? I don't know. Now, he did shoot up <laughs> the new terminology. The club was shot up because of D-Mac. You know what I mean? They shot at D-Mac. You know what I mean? D-Mac shot up the club. They shot at D-Mac. You see what I'm saying? So we knew that he always had a problem because it was just two 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds with guns. You know what I mean? We knew it was two young brothers running around 
with the Thule on it. Just shooting up the club for no fucking reason. We always knew d Mac had a problem. The first step is denial. We all looked at it like, oh, he's just a kid. He's traumatized. His mama was a junkie. His dad was gay and left him allegedly. Man, D-Mac was just on some bullshit. That's all it was. We can't put the blame on everybody. D-Mac was on some bullshit. No matter how much you raise a kid, a kid doing this is on some bullshit. So we knew that D-Mac had a problem. But JP didn't have any fatherly experience, so he didn't know that you couldn't leave a loaded gun around D-Mac who had a bullet wound in his motherfucking gut. He did not know you leaving a motherfucking loaded gun around D-Mac. It's like leaving a motherfucking pizza at the motherfucking counter of a police station. What movie is that? What movie is that? Leaving that gun around D-Mac, you already know what he's about to do with it. What do you think the Mac and his name came from? His last name ain't McDaniel. It's motherfucking Mac, nigga. Mac 10. Where do you think the Mac from D-Mac came from? Yeah, yeah, you got a trench. <laughs> Blue Street. Yeah, yeah, Martin said, I'll leave this around you. <laughs> Leaving a gun around D Mac, you can't say the D pause without the Mac. What the fuck? You leave a loaded gun around this nigga two feet away. You didn't hide it in the room in the safe for nothing. Fuck that. This ain't this ain't D Mac's mistake. This is not D Mac's mistake. Nope. Hell no, nah, it ain't D Mac's mistake. No, it ain't even like that. Nope. This is not D-Max mistake. It's this nigga right here. It's this nigga right here. Whole time we were thinking it was D-Max. It's this nigga right here. We're done, JP. That's it. You were broke as hell last season. You left a loaded fucking firearm around this nigga. And you didn't think that he was going to go and grab that motherfucker? Hell no, D-Max. This ain't on you. My bad. My bad. You didn't have nothing. That that that's just bad raising right here. That's just, that's all it is. He didn't he didn't attempt to put it in the closet like Detective Howard. He didn't attempt to do nothing. No lockbox, just a regular drawer. The drawer that you put the motherfucking bills in. You did stow shit in there, motherfucker. A gun, nigga, with the toolie in the drawer. Man, I wish a nigga would like a kitchen cabinet. Well, guess what? This nigga did. Oh man. You just heard him say, damn, Uncle Tommy, I don't get my guns. Hell no, you don't get your guns, nigga. We know what you're going to do. You get a gun in your hand. You're going to tear some shit up, nigga. You're going to kill something. You were shooting the club up for no reason, man. This nigga, JP. Don't stay up too late. There's a gun in there, but you need to be responsible. You need to make sure that you read every day, D-Mac, okay? I love you. I didn't leave you. Your mom just didn't tell you the truth about me. Like, damn, D-Mac, take the gun upstairs. This nigga put the gun in the drawer and told his son, don't stay up too late, and patted him on the shoulder. Nigga, he about to be up late to the motherfucker with that fire on him. Nigga, he... Nigga. Not only did he stay up late, this nigga got up early and went to go hoop with the gun in the backpack. Backpack, backpack. This nigga took the gun to the park. Ain't beefing with nobody. Them niggas shot you. They know where you live. Them niggas ain't worried about you. This nigga took the gun. This nigga JP just at the motherfucking shop like life is sweet. la dee dee Playing the fucking piano. This nigga out here with a gun hanging out with Marshall. Marshall, remember when 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 JP started talking to D Mac and Marshall was like, let's go shoot the club. This nigga was still trying to shoot the club up, knowing that this was D Mac's potential dad or somebody that he knew. This nigga Marshall different. This nigga Marshall talking about, yeah, we getting money out we here, baby. CBI, baby. We ain't seen Darnell. I'm not Darnell, but fucking Marshall move one pack. One pack. JP. You knew you shouldn't have left this kid alone. He's been trying to get out, man. His trigger finger is itching. 
this nigga JP, this ain't this ain't on DMAC. This ain't on DMAC. We got it. What up, Rusty? Now nah, you good. Right on time, man. Hey, you know what? I apologize. I apologize to DMAC because at first I was thinking maybe we just on some bullshit. Maybe, maybe, maybe you were. Maybe, maybe you misguided. But then I realized Tommy is your uncle. And your dad, JP, just ain't. He he just that did he top five worst fathers all time. Damn, JP, you just dropped down the list just like that. Top five. Son got shot. Left a Thule around him. Oh. Why does D-Mac have a book bag? He dropped out of school. What is he doing, JP? He ain't slanging for y'all. The nigga just got out the hospital because the motherfucking flesh wound was getting ate up by bacteria because he wasn't putting nothing on it. And you left this nigga alone? He didn't know to change his own bandage or motherfucking clean it, JP. You think leaving a gun around D-Mac was a good idea? Come on, man. Now I see why your ass was $396,000 in fucking debt, man. You don't think about shit. You just do shit, man. Come on, JP. We were rooting for you, man. But now we realizing that D-Mac isn't the problem, man. D-Mac would have never caught a body if his daddy didn't put a gun in the fucking drawer. Uh, he's 16 years old, man. He ain't all the way there. All right, all right. I'm going to get it all right, okay? <laughs> D-Mac, calm down. It's just a bullet wound to the head. Tommy, what can we do to fix it? Nigga, nothing. It's over with, man. We going to jail. Each and every one. Well, not me. Not me. <laughs> I wasn't there. I don't know nothing that they talking about. Man, we don't know where D-Mac mama is, man. D-Mac mama, she wasn't around in the first season. Remember, he was just out living in. Living amongst the streets because he had that little uh what was it a cigarette box, cigarette container? Damn. Man, all right, man. We can't blame, we can't put that blame on, on D Mac no more. But now we gotta put some blame on D Mac. Man, this nigga took the gun outside, man. I was trying to help you out, JP. JP, you cool people, man. D Mac shouldn't have took that gun. What the fuck we talking about, man. D Mac no right from wrong. D Mag no right from my, this nigga told Tommy earlier today I'm gonna join treason. Really, nigga? <laughs> Man, D Mag just don't bullshit. This ain't on JP. I apologize, JP. You do deserve a lot of the blame, like 80%, but no, nah, hell no. Nah. This is on this nigga D Mac. This motherfucker came down there just to shooting. Ain't asked no question, no nothing. Shoot first, ask questions later. We don't cut Tariq no slack. We don't cut Kanan no slack. We ain't cutting D-Mac no slack. Nigga, you fucking up out in these streets, nigga. I was on Kanan's top pause last, uh, no, the first season when he made that bad batch. Man, Kanan's ass. Man, get this nigga Kanan out of here. D-Mac, what are you doing, man? You killed a police. Oh, well, damn, Kanan tried to kill one, too. But that was his daddy, though. Nigga, this ain't your dad, nigga. We going to jail for this one. <laughs> we can't cover this body up. But guess what? This body can always come back in season three, season four, season five. So D-Mac has a story. D-Mac has a story. He called a body. When did Tariq catch his first body? What was Tariq, about the same age? Or Tariq was like 13, 14. How old was Tariq? Because Tariq killed a cop. D Mac killed a. Well, is Bennigan on the. Is he still on the force? Or they just. Or was he just suspended? I, I don't remember what they said about Bennigan. I know one of y'all know. But that was a good clean shot right there, though. That turned this episode up. That That's where I said that this is a good, this is a good episode. 
I mean, it was a good episode, but D Mac, I like what they did there. That was great. <sighs> Perfecto. Reek was 15, 16, 14, 15. We'll just say 15 then. Yeah. yeah, we'll just take the average. We'll just say Tariq's like 15. So D Mac, what are they like 16, 17? Well, probably like 15, 16. They might be a little older than what Tariq was. Excuse me. And Tariq is what? And so this is still part of season one. So Tariq is only 18, 18 in season one. So this is still a continuation. So that means D-Mac is like 15, 16, because he's younger than Tariq. All right, bet. So yeah, at this point, he's like 15, 16. Damn, Tariq got a couple of bodies on his case. We need to go back and count Tariq's bodies. We talking about everybody else catching bodies. That nigga Tariq got a couple on his hand. Tariq got at least a full fist. Hey, off the top of the dome, how many how many bodies Tariq got? Tariq got at least a fist. He got at least a solid five. His dad. Oh boy. The 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 cop. Uh, Bash. Tariq got like five. Yeah, I think Tariq got five. I can't remember, to be honest with you. I don't know how many. I, I, I think Tariq got a solid five at least. He might be around the seven range, six or seven. Well, maybe not direct kills. I can't even remember with Tariq. I never did a, I never did a counter for Tariq. Next season we had to go because yeah we didn't start the uh, we didn't start the counter until uh, what's the name the season we just watched what, what did we just watch damn what was the last show no raising Canaan no shit I can't even oh ghost no did we do a ghost oh yeah but we were counting the Tejada family yeah we were doing the Tejada family and uh, ghost that's why right. Damn, boy, I forgot all about Ghost. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we counted up the Tejada family in Ghost because they had, well, in the two seasons, they got like 40 bodies or some shit like that. Yeah, we were just counting up the Tejadas because they had a lot. But next season, we'll we'll do Tariq. But like I said, I'm going to have a board. I'm going to have a tally. I'm going to have the, uh, so my mind, what we going to do, because I want, I want everything to be like physical. So I'm going to have the suspect board and I'm going to have a tally counter so we can count up the bodies like that. And we'll have both of those posted. So we'll have that going on once I get situated. You know what I mean? See, I probably got to order that shit through Amazon, though. I might get one of them scoreboards <laughs> that they have for the basketball games that you flip the numbers over. I might do one of those. Russian dad, Ray Ray, Badge Professor. Three got six. That's what I'm saying. I knew he had a solid five at least. He had a solid five. What up, Big Alex? So we're bidding again. How are we going to get out of this? Are they? Is this going to be D Max introduction? into cleaning up bodies you know what i mean they're gonna have to get rid of this body now i did have a theory just because it's what benedict said he could kill them and burn the place down and no one would, would care or even come looking so i was thinking they could do some shit like that i mean it's a little far-fetched but it is the tv world you know we'll say oh well what about the dna they find out yeah we know that but just saying like in the tv world what if they killed it? well what if they already did kill what if they burn down the, uh, the shop and they relocate you know what i mean And they relocate. Because I don't know how they're going to get out of this unless this is the introduction to DMAC cleaning up bodies. Or is Tommy going to tell them to go home, give them the gun, and just go straight home? The cop's name is uh, <laughs> Seamus uh, Bennigan. Shit, he did a good job, though. 
Me personally, I thought he was thinking about taking a 200, but a lot of people are saying he was about to pull that trigger. So D-Mac did save him, but he got this talk about real cook. You know what I mean? There's really nothing that they can do at this point besides getting rid of the body or burning down the, the barbershop or something. But also what me and Brillo were saying is, wouldn't it be crazy if Tyrone Reeves is upstairs and he hears a shot go off? I want them to show, like, if D-Mac walked past him. You know what I'm saying? Because Brillo was saying, what if he was upstairs and once Diamond comes, he's like, what was that noise? And I was saying, what if they showed him, like, either standing outside or in the barbershop and we see D-Mac walk past him to go downstairs and then you hear the shot. And this is how he starts to pick up on what's going on. You see what I'm saying? I like damn, that'd be dope. <laughs> Miles said that liquid nitrogen. Man, you think uh, Miguel gonna let them balls them liquid nitrogen <laughs> to turn them into? I mean, ice me. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna check it, Queen. <laughs> damn. That would be dope if they showed like Tyrone upstairs. So now Tyrone, he'll start asking, like, what was that doing? And he's like, oh, it's nothing. And maybe he sees like Tommy come up and now he's starting to connect. I'm like, what is he doing with Tommy? Who is this white guy? I keep seeing him around the shop. You know what I mean? Because Tyrone has to start doing some kind of digging. List by main characters. Right, I'm, 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 I'm going to read these. Uh, I might make a video on that. Hey, what y'all wanna? Would y'all wanna do a video on uh like the main killers? You know what I'm saying? The main characters' killings. Would y'all be cool for a live like that where I bring up all the killings that they did and we just talk about like one character? Like just a random day in the week. I just pick somebody and we go over like the bodies that they caught. Y'all be cool with that or not? Nah? Because if not, don't get me on here, the lion. I got to see what episode all these people died in. Damn, this is a long list, too. Pause. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do something like this because this will probably be something easy I can do before I dip. Yeah, I'll probably just do one and we'll just start picking characters. Now, that's a whole bunch of people on here. We just have to, some of these people will probably do like two or three in a night. Pause. Three Jamaican assassins. Oh, yeah, I forgot about me lying. Damn, now I want to, I'm going to read up on this tonight, then. All right, damn. Benningham was going to take that money, man. Fuck all that. D-Mac really messed up here. Man, this is going to have the block really hot. Because I need to go back. Can anyone confirm, is he just suspended from work or is he fired? Because I know they pulled him off, and that's why Tyrone Reeves is the PO officer. But is he still a police officer? At least still like an officer of the law, right? Okay, so he still is. So it was you were just removed from being the PO officer. Oh, because he was Diamond was showing up late and he wasn't doing his job. He was wilding out. All right, so he is on the force still. He just fucking suspended from being a PO officer. Yeah, they're going to be looking for him. Oh, man, that's going to be either Tyrone Reeves is going to be doing a little bit of investigating. Like, it's going to come up that Bennigan's been missing. Either Reeves or, man, you know, uh, DeFranco, Bobby about to get, <laughs> if Bobby gets on this case, it might be over for Diamond. If Bobby gets on this case, Diamond might be going to prison. This is like open and close. You know what I mean? You open the case up. You look at it. Who is it? Diamond or David? Oh, yeah. He going to jail. He going to jail. Nigga got to go. Nigga got to go. Nigga got to go. Damn. D-Mac really did fuck some shit up, man. This right here was unexpected. I mean, we all knew that it was going to be a dirty cop. But I was thinking... He was going to live a little longer. I was thinking he was going to live a little longer. 
and we're gonna see him do some dirty shit and maybe get popped some other way. But them having D Mac do this, oh yeah, that that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I definitely rate that as one of the nicest kills I've seen in the Power Universe in a while. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since we had something like that. Been a minute made you sit back and say, "Damn, that was cold blooded." Cold blooded. Damn. But yeah, man, that's that's the Monday mistakes. We're gonna do a Tubi movie. Uh, what time is it? Seven forty-three. Yeah, we're gonna do a Tubi movie about ten. No, what ten? What eight? It's about to be eight. Probably like nine. Probably like probably like ten Eastern. We got like a little Tubi movie. If you haven't joined the Discord, it's pinned in the chat. I got some free time. Kind of losing my voice though. Fucking screaming about fucking. D Mac and that damn gun. No, I don't know if he was on drugs. I think he was just fidgety. <laughs> he had that itch. But yeah, <laughs> I need like five subscribers on my the Mo You Know channel. If you could go ahead and subscribe to that for me tomorrow during the daytime, we got Griselda Blanca, the queen of cocaine. We're going to be doing that documentary. You know what I'm saying? Another to be smasher. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have that. Tomorrow midday, probably 3 p.m. Eastern, probably 3 p.m. Eastern, maybe 2, depending on how, because I got to get up and do some shit. So it might be around 3 p.m. Eastern, but we're going to have that documentary going. So if you could uh, subscribe to that channel for me, about five away from 200, join the Discord. Also subscribe to this channel, hit that like button. Each and every Monday we get on here, talk about two or three characters. We break down their mistakes, try to figure out how we can get them up out of there and get things right and how it could potentially fuck up the whole universe because we just found out that Vic Flynn is really, he's like Thanos almost. Vic Flynn getting arrested could fuck up everything. But we're going to see how that goes. Ben again, R.I.P., R.I.P. to the young man. Oh, we don't even know what's going to happen with that body. You know. <laughs> going to clean the bathroom. That <laughs> Cleaning. Cleaning the bed. What the fuck was that? Hey, oh, 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 oh. This is janitor 37044. In the African district of the motherfucking zoo, we have a code red in the bathroom. A code red. If you didn't know what a code red is, means it's a nigga down and out. <laughs> code red. There's a code red in the bathroom in the eastern part of the African safari. We need backup. Uh, send a bus. Yes, yeah, send the bus. He looks like he's gone. Let me see. Yep, and that's a negative. He's no longer with us. It looks like he was stabbed in the abdomen. I'm not too sure who was stabbed someone at the zoo, but it does look like he's down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next restroom and continue my shift. I get off in three hours. <laughs> he's in the bathroom stall. Damn, I forgot all about that, man. Tommy did catch a body. Tommy caught that body in the bathroom. Man, this nigga Tommy, bro. We talking about all the dumb shit D Mac and everybody doing. This nigga Tommy every episode drops a body. He leaves real bodies. We know in theory, this is how crazy this is. We know that the future Tommy is gonna be catching bodies. So we're over here talking about the mistakes that D Mac made last week. We know in the future Tommy's still gonna be catching bodies. That is confirmed. That's one thing we do know. Tommy's gonna catch a body and a half in the future. In the future, we know that. We know that. Damn. That's some crazy shit, ain't it? We know that in the future, he gonna catch a body. He gonna catch a body. Man, on a farm, uh, oh. 
fingerprints all in that bathroom. I can't even find the shit. Yeah, Tommy's a wild boy, man. And they got him on footage doing the damn driver's test. So I know they got footage of him going to the zoo. Well, they don't physically because they got stopped behind the train. Lord knows. <laughs> I wouldn't even been speeding. I would have seen that train. I would have easily been on the brakes. I'm like, man, we're not chasing them, bro. <laughs> we're not chasing them. If y'all were the police, are y'all trying to are y'all gonna try to jump across that train track or y'all gonna stop chasing Tommy? You're gonna end pursuit. What you doing? If you the police, you the feds, and you chasing after Tommy Egan, this is your one chance to get Tommy Egan. Are you going across the train tracks or are you stopping? That's what I want to know. I want to know who really about that life. Who really trying to bring criminals to justice? Y'all, y'all pursuing or y'all ending it up like, hey, hey, uh, hey, Bobby. Yeah, real quick, we were uh, in pursuit of Tommy and Mireya, but uh, yeah, they they jumped across the damn train track. It was some crazy shit. I ain't believe it, but it, yeah, they in like a Toyota Tacoma now. Yeah, they had that Mustang, but that motherfucker got shot up. It was like more than five bullets in it. And you know what Bobby's gonna say? Bobby gonna say, "Well, why didn't you jump the track too? Uh, the train was coming." Then how did Tommy get across it? Uh, well, Mireya was actually driving, but they drove past so fast. He said there wasn't no ramps or nothing out there. Bobby DeFranco would have got around this. Bobby would have, I'm sorry to say it, but let me tell you, when Bobby's in pursuit, Bobby would have continued to drive and somehow hit a ramp and jump through the train. But it'd be a part where ain't nobody sitting there. He would have continued pursuit of Tommy. Vargas said, nigga, I'm not dying out here. He hit the brakes. He hit the brakes. Look at him. He's like, hell no. But Bobby, you remember the cartoon Bobby's World? He had that big ass head, used to be on the damn little tricycle. Wee! I used to watch Bobby's World all the time. Bobby DeFranco would have jumped through the train. Uh, uh, we like, damn, this shit would have looked like Bad Boys too. We would have been like, man, this nigga Bobby is different. But I know for sure, if I was in that cop car, Man, we hitting the brakes. This one, we ain't going to be able to pull off. Look at this. They barely getting by. And we know anybody that's brave enough to do this, it ain't their first time driving. Now, I've been driving for roughly 23 years. I've been driving for roughly 23 years, and I've never been crazy enough to do this in a truck. Now, I had a couple of cars. I did this probably about 19 times in my lifetime. 19 and no. Beat the train every time. But don't y'all do that. Do not do that. Now, that, that that's different. I was in Momo. You know, 19 times in a car, made it happen. But to be crazy enough to do it in a truck, oh, no. And y'all already know I don't drive police cars. I told y'all I hate looking at them. They pull up to the spot. They got that big-ass light. You always think. Hey, man, the police behind me? No, it was just a nigga in a motherfucking Crown Vic. Like, hey, man, get rid of that car. Why you driving that car, man? This shit ain't tight. But, yeah, don't do this. Don't do this, y'all. If you got a truck, definitely don't do it. But don't do it at all. Like, I, I did that when I was younger, 19 and 0. Man, it sounds good. That record sounds good. But each and every time I put my life on the line, I, I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. Not even my worst enemy. So don't do that. 19 and 0, I was going to go for 20, but I was like, nah, 19 and 0 was already low key, you know what I'm saying, cool, you know what I mean? If I went for 20, I would have probably got the record, but I was like, nah, that ain't, ain't worth it, like, you know what I mean? I don't want kids looking up to me like, man, that nigga Mo was the train jumper, you know what I mean? Pause, because that sounded crazy. That nigga Mo was the motherfucking uh, transport, no, nah, that sound wild too. That nigga Mo was a wild boy, you know what I mean? I don't want kids looking up to me like that. Because then we'd have more D-Max. We, we don't want that more Bacaris, more Tariqs, nah. more Canes. Come on, do we need more Canes out here? More Zeeks? Do we need more Zeeks out here? Come on, man. But yeah. yeah. Man, y'all know I can get on this thing and just talk. But let me hit that like button. Subscribe to my new channel, the more you know. We got the documentary tomorrow. Uh, the cocaine... The no, the, not the cocaine, the queen, the queen of cocaine, man. You know, I can't remember nothing. We got that. We got a Tubi movie. I'm going to be back in like an hour. 
Uh, if you haven't joined the Discord, join. You can recommend Tubi movies in there. Shout out to my girl Kendall, my number one my. You know what I mean? She's gonna always make sure I'm on the right track. But yeah, just request a movie. We're gonna see if we can watch it. If not, I'm pulling out the old trusty Tubi original and we're gonna watch some bullshit and we're gonna make it happen like we did last night. I had dreams about vampires last night. I said, Oh, I don't want to bury no bourbon. I don't want no vampires in my life. I just want to go to sleep, wake up. Sometimes I like being outside. I don't want to be inside all the time. I ain't trying to hang out at night. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. CJ Funny. Yeah, I got. I, I, I had one of his videos. I be seeing his shit pop up. But I be iffy on playing that on my channel, man. For some reason, even if I play like small clips, man, I got to cut them all up. But. I mean, I, I'll check them out. I, I'll reach out to him and see if I can use his stuff because I don't want to just be, you know what I mean? That That's his thing. But, I mean, we can go over and talk about it. Shit, it shouldn't be that bad. But, yeah, I'll holler out. I'll send him a message. Yeah, I'll be, seeing, I'll be watching his videos. But I like watching his videos because he's putting, you know what I'm saying, putting it all together, you know what I mean? He put it all together so I can just go back and watch. It's not like it's a theory or anything. You know? A lot of people that, that come up with theories, I ain't going to lie to you. I don't. Like, I'll get on a live show with you, but I won't watch your videos. You know what I mean? I'll watch your videos, but it's not like I'm about to watch every one because I want my own theories. But if we on a live show, cool. You know what I mean? I just want to. I don't think I can come up with stories off the top of the dome using somebody else's story. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I'm trying to piece together a theory, I'm just trying to do it right then and there. Try to make it make sense. Like, the whole thing with Vic, that was off the top of the dome. The whole thing with Vic, and I was like, wait a minute, we just followed this rabbit trail. Vic can fuck up the whole power universe. Oh, my God. I didn't know he had that much power. No one man should have all that power. Yeah, yeah, but this is Monday Mistakes. I'm Modi J. See y'all in an hour. We got motherfucking Tubi, man. They're about to get the crack. We're going to find something good. We might have to go back to Detroit. Cause I don't, oh, we was outside of Vegas last night. We might need to go back to Detroit. We might need to get some ping, ping, ping. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Some ping, ping. You know what I mean? We need some shoot, shoot. Yeah, we need some action. I'm just going to be real. I'm just going to throw it out there. We need some action. We need some action. We got to liven up our lives, man. Everybody was down last night when nobody commented in the chat. It was like everybody was just sleeping, getting ready for work. No, tonight we need some action. We got to turn it up just a little notch. But don't send me something that y'all know I got to take off screen unless you, if you've seen it before, you're going to let me know to take it off screen, man. We getting close. We, we getting close now. Sometimes, well, I ain't going to lie. Most of the time it be on me. I don't even be paying attention. I be talking shit. And then I look up, like, oh, shit, we got to take that off the screen. You know what I mean? But yeah, 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 yeah. Let me get out of here because I'm just going to be talking shit. And I'm going to run out of material for Thursday of next week. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm Modi J. I appreciate all y'all. One week left, y'all. One week left. Like I said, after Sunday, I might I might do the last Monday mistakes, and that'll be my last live. Cause then Tuesday and Wednesday, I gotta pack up and I just I'm just trying to chill. So yeah, I think Monday mistakes will be my last live next week, y'all. Yeah. Episode five. Episode five. My last my last live will be a Monday mistakes. That. that all right that works that works hit that like button hit that subscribe button man i'll see y'all in an hour grand old time man you know what you can do